DocuSign recently introduced a new functionality called Web Forms. And so in this video, I'm going to explain what Web Forms are and how they differ from Power Forms. I'll also show you how to set up the Web Form and we'll end up with my honest thoughts on that new functionality. So let's get started. So what is a Web Form? A Web Form is a new kind of self-service DocuSign documents that boost your signer's experience when filling out forms on mobile devices because the Web Form will adapt to your signer's screens, which means they don't have to scroll through horizontally and zoom in and zoom out, trying to fill out a confusing PDF. And so this way, your signers are much more likely to complete your forms faster, which accelerates the speed of your business transactions. Web forms are very similar to Power Forms because your recipients can access them from a URL on demand, and you can also send the link to that web form to your recipients by email. So how are those web forms different from Power Forms? I'll get to that in a minute. But for now, first, if you're new to this channel, welcome. My name is Sofian Saudi. I'm the founder of Solisan Consulting. We help companies grow by automating paperwork and systems so that they can serve more customers better and faster with fewer resources. If you're interested in getting our help to automate your clients or staff onboarding experiences, you'll find the link in the description of this video to book a consultation with one of our automation consultants. And if you're new to DocuSign, I also strongly recommend that you download our DocuSign Mastery Cheat Sheet because it will help you understand how to automate all your forms and documents and get started with DocuSign. And all the links of the things that I will mention throughout the course of this video, you can find them just down below in the description. So now let's go back to the difference between a web form and a power form. Even if a power form can technically be mobile responsive, it takes a lot of effort to make them so because you have to format the document that's underlying in the template in a very specific way. I've covered this in this particular video. You can watch later if you want. But what you need to know for today is that the main difference between the Power Form and the Web Form is that with Web Forms, you don't need to format your document in a specific way for your users to see a mobile responsive version of that same document. Instead of looking at a PDF, your user will see a summary of all the fields contained in the document broken down into different sections across different pages. And the entire experience is fully mobile responsive. Once the signer has completed filling out all the form fields of the web form, they will see the underlying document and sign that PDF as usual, which is the typical DocuSign signing experience. The other main difference between the two is the way web forms only deduct one envelope after the user submits the form. Unlike Power Forms, which are deducted from your envelope count as soon as the signer accesses the form. This aspect, in my opinion, definitely gives web forms an edge. Another key difference is that web forms allow your recipients to add other people to sign that form as they are filling the form. This is a really neat feature for things like financial agreements where you might need multiple people to sign the agreement, but the sender of the form doesn't know those additional recipients. Let me explain to you the difference between the way this happens in web forms and power forms. With Power Forms, your signers are presented with a Power Form landing page. And on that landing page, they can add the name and email of additional signers. But Sometimes your signers will not know until they access the documents that they need to add additional recipients. And that's the problem because with Power Forms, it's too late. Once they clicked on begin signing, your recipients cannot add an additional recipient. But with web forms, as your first recipient is filling out the, the web form, then you can display a question that says, do you want to add an additional signer for X, Y, Z reason? For example, do you have a spouse? If they select yes, then the spouse name and email will be required as they fill out the form field. Now let's take a look at how to set up the web form. So since web forms are template based, like a power form, you'll first have to set up a template and prepare your template so that it's compatible with the web form. And so preparing your template for web form compatibility means that you need to give a meaningful name to all your fields. Once you gave a meaningful name to all your labels, you'll want to remove all the conditional logic and validation rules from all the fields in your template if you had already built it before. And before you do this, I recommend that you make a copy of your template so that you don't lose all the validation and conditional logic rules in case the setup of the web form fails. This happens to me and I was not very happy because I had to rebuild everything from scratch. So make a copy of your template. If you've already got a template working and then remove the conditional logic and validation rules from that copy. And then from that copy, you'll set up the web form. And the final prep item is to make sure that all your recipients have a role in the template, in the signing flow, and that the first recipient has a needs to sign action and at least one checkbox drop down or radio button or even text field assigned to them. Now that your template is compatible for web form creation, you can go ahead to the forms tab and then create a web form from there by selecting web form and then the template you want to use as the basis for your web form. 
DocuSign will then create a web form and here is what the screen looks like. It's very similar to the way you would normally build your DocuSign templates. So on the left, we have the fields, which are also called questions. And so these fields are grouped by pages. If you want to change the order in which those questions are presented to your users, you can just do this by dragging them around. Now in the middle of the screen, we have what the form looks like with a list of all the fields. You can click on one of those fields to customize the name, the label, the description. We can also create conditional and validation rules. If you want to learn how to set up conditional logic rules in your web forms, look out for my next video on that exact topic. It's going to come in the next couple of weeks. Once you've added all your questions, then you can go to the thank you page and display a message to your user so that they know what the next step is. You can also display a button which will send them to a specific URL. So once you've done all of this, you're ready to activate your web form. And so we'll click on activate and then we'll follow the prompt. And then we're going to save the URL of that web form, which we can then embed on our website. And you can also share the link to that web form by email if you want to. Let's now do a quick submission so that you can see how it works. What you're looking at now is the form from the form fillers perspective. And so I'm showing you how it would look on mobile device, but obviously it will also work on desktop. I filled out all the form fields and I get a summary of all my responses. I can then click on submit. And so once I submit the form, DocuSign envelope then starts. This is when you pay for the envelope. And as the form filler, I've also received an email asking me to sign the document. This is the typical DocuSign email that your recipients receive. The reason they receive this is because in case they submit the form, but then close the browser, you don't want them to have lost this envelope. And so they will still get the email notification and even reminders until they complete the DocuSign envelope. So here I'm going to sign. If other users were included in the workflow, then those will receive the documents for them to sign. And this is the typical signing experience that your signers will see. They won't see the web form. They'll just see the PDF signing experience, which you're already used to with the standard DocuSign signing experience. Now, let me share with you my honest opinions of web forms. If you've been watching my videos for a while, for the past three years, been doing DocuSign videos. I'm a big DocuSign fan. I love DocuSign because it's very robust. It's very safe. It works very well for most business use cases. However, I think this product as it is now lacks features and functionalities that make it easy for the form builder and for the form filler to use. The first reason is that it's still document template based. You first have to create a document, the template, create the fields, and then convert that template into a web form. It's just too many steps. What if I just want to create the form from scratch without having an underlying document? Well, I can't do it. The second reason I'm not a fan of web forms yet is that form in the fields aren't available, which means that if you want to display the result of a calculation, such as the total price, as your form filler selects a product and the quantity, you just can't. You can still use the formula field in the DocuSign template, which means that once the form filler has filled out all the fields and get redirected to the signature page, they will see that total calculation. But what if the form filler wants to see the, the calculation as they fill out the form. It's just not possible. And so it's not a great experience because by the time you've reached the DocuSign signature page, you can't go back to the web form. I mean, it's just, it's just not great. The third reason is that you can't use attachment fields. So same as formula fields, attachment fields aren't supported, which means the user has to wait until they go to the signature page to upload a document. Same thing. I don't think it's a great experience. Fourth reason is that after building your questions, if you realize that you want to move some questions to a different page, you can't do that. You will need to recreate that same question in the page where you want to move the question to. And so this just creates more work for the DocuSign admin for who's responsible to build this. The fifth reason is that you can't pre-fill the form before sending it to your signers. Let's say that you want to set up a form that your clients can access so that they can update their bank details. With a power form, you can pre-fill the form fields with information you already have on hand. And you can do this manually or automatically if you're using an integration. That means that your signers won't need to provide the details you already have on file. But with web forms, you're going to have to ask your client their name, their email address, maybe their mailing address, all of the information you already have on hand, which again is not a great experience. And this is because web forms cannot be integrated with backend systems as of today. The sixth reason is about setting up condition logic. It can be done only one field at a time, which is very slow. Because if you're asking if the signer has a spouse and you're giving them a yes, no option, obviously they select yes, you're going to want to ask for the spouse name and the spouse email address. And if you do this with web forms, you're going to have to create two rules, one for each field. What happens if you have dozens of fields? You're going to have to set up dozens of rules, which takes a lot of time 
It's so annoying. Again, not a great experience for the form builder. And the seventh reason is that there is no easy way to retrieve web form data automatically for the questions that you create in the web form that are not in a DocuSign template. Because what happens is once you create your web form from the template, the web form will extract all the form fields that are in that template and display them in the web form. And then you can delete them if you want, and you can create new fields which are not in the template. Those new fields that you only ask in the web form, you won't be able to get the data that was filled out by your signers programmatically. If you want to get the data, you have to download a CSV. And I'm sorry, but in 2023, I'm expecting a native integration with Google Sheets or Excel Online, Airtable, Monday, Salesforce, HubSpot, whatever that is, and it's just not present. Who wants to use a CSV in 2023 other than an old accountant who doesn't even know what cloud software is? But I know that DocuSign will improve it over time. It's just that I'm not impressed for now. If your use case is super simple and you don't want to pay an additional form software, then fine, go ahead. But if you want a form software that's very robust and that you can integrate, then try JotForm. Now, talking about JotForm, in the next video, I'll be showing you how we use JotForm to create an amazing onboarding experience for clients and automate payment collection using the Stripe integration. I'll see you then.